This is Eric from Pack Hacker, and today we're taking a look at the Sea to Summit Ultra Sail Nano Shopping Bag, which I've been testing for the past two weeks. If you find this video helpful, make sure you subscribe so we can continue making content like this to help you travel smarter. Let's dive in. So you might be wondering why we're so zoomed out right now, but that's because this is a compressible bag. And this is actually an 18 liter shopping bag that comes out of this little case. So I'll bring it up close until we open it, it up. So this is 15D nylon. Uh, it has this stuff sack that is actually attached to the bag as well, so you can't lose it. And the stuff sack is secured with this kind of like paracord like material. And then we've got this hard plastic adjuster. It's really small, so if you struggle, like if you have big hands or maybe arthritis or something like that, it might be hard for you to open and close it. But um, for the most part, it's pretty easy to do when you're not actually opening and closing it all that much. Like if you took this on a trip, you just leave this in your bag until you got there. And then you could open it up and leave it open in your hotel room, wherever you're staying hostile, and then close it up again when you're done. So that's really not that much uh, manipulation with this little adjuster. But also on the stuff sack here, we have a picture of the bag. We got the little Sea to Summit logo there as well and a neat little just design on it. So this is nice because if you have a bunch of little bags like these, let's, let's say you had like, you know, three or four of them you're taking on your trip, you had a sling and different kinds of, you know, drawstring bag or something like that. You know which one this is because it has that little picture right there, which is helpful so you know you're grabbing the right one and you can just get up and go. And then we also have this little strap here. So you can obviously hold onto it by this, so you could like hold onto it by this, but you could use a carabiner to attach this to a bag or to attach it inside of a sling or something like that. And it's got the little C to Summit logo on there as well. But to open it, pretty simple stuff. You just pop it open like this and then slide the bag out. So something to note is that right when you take it out, it's gonna be wrinkled. Even if you hasn't been in there that long, it's almost, in my experience anyway, it's almost always going to be wrinkled. But as you can see here, the stuff sack is attached. It just kind of folds inside there. And it takes, I mean, I don't know. It depends how heavy of the stuff you have in there or how full it is, but between anywhere between like an hour or it could take even longer than that if you don't have a ton of stuff in here for the wrinkles to come out. Something I didn't notice that I've noticed on other packable bags like this is that the stitching is, is pretty high quality on this one. I haven't really noticed any loose threads or anything like that. And the construction appears to be very good. The material, it almost feels like, you know, a regular shopping bag, but it does have, you know, two ply, on, at least on the top part here and up here and the high, um, I don't even know what to call it, where it might come into more contact. And then down here, single ply, but very durable. So when it comes to fit notes, obviously the most or the easiest way to carry this bag is just by the handles here. But there isn't a ton of padding, or I shouldn't say there isn't any padding, and there isn't any aeration or anything like that. So it might start to dig into your hand a little bit because you're just holding it like this. But depending on you know how big your arm is or how much stuff you have stuffed inside, you can kind of turn it into an over-the-shoulder bag like this. But as you can see, you know, if you had a bunch of stuff in the bag, your arm kind of sits awkwardly like that. But this is a lot more comfortable, especially like right now I'm wearing a sweatshirt. So if there were like heavier items in the bag, it would dig in a little bit, but the sweatshirt kind of pat pads that as when you're carrying it with just your hand, it's just kind of digging into your hand. And for the most part, I mean, I don't expect something like this to have a ton of padding, but if you were to take this to the market and get some produce, it could really start digging into your hand and be uncomfortable. And for that short walk, it's a lot more comfortable to just throw it up here and then walk. And then once you get back, you can take everything out and then you have your groceries or whatever you just bought. So moving on to the inside of this bag, my notes literally just say simple, cool design because there really isn't much going on on the inside of this. There's no organization or anything like that. It's just a big open space. As you can see when I show you that, there's li like, li like I said, there's literally nothing going on in there. I mentioned earlier you have the stuff sack here. And I didn't notice on occasion when I, if I wasn't paying attention to what I was putting in or pulling out of the bag, it could like hit this or get caught on it if it has like a corner. But at the end of the day, I'd much rather have the stuff sack attached where I can access it than have it not be there and lose it and then this becomes, I mean, it still would be packable, but you couldn't put it into, you know, a really small container. But as I said, for the cool design, I'll pop this open this way. It's kind of got a neat design there on the bottom. It's similar to the design that's on the bottom here of the stuff sack. Similar kind of just neat design, almost looks like um, a gem or a mineral or something like that. Um, but obviously the C to Summit here is backwards because it's on the inside and then you can kind of see it through a little bit, not a ton, 
maybe just because the, the light is in front of me and not underneath it. But overall, I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. This material is durable. In the places you want this bag to have the extra reinforcement on the handles up here and near the top where the handles come to attach to the rest of the bag, it has that extra, extra stitching and no loose threads or anything like that. So it just does what you need it to do. You could take this to the market, like I said, or even if you're just going out in a new city and you don't know what you're gonna come across, like if you liked it, like take a day to just walk across a new city where you haven't been before. That's something I like to do, but it can be kind of stressful. I shouldn't say stressful is probably the wrong word for it. But if you're going out and you don't know what you're gonna run into, if you have a bag like this, if you end up stopping at like a, um, an outdoor market or something like that, or if there's a flea market or an antique store or something like that, you have a bag to put your stuff in so you're not walking across uh, Prague with a you know stack full of records in your hand or something like that. That's probably a bad example, but you get my point. You really can fit quite a lot of gear in here because it is 18 liters. But when it goes to stuffing it back in the sack, there really isn't a best way to do it. At first I thought, oh, I'm gonna be neat. I'm gonna fold it and I like fold, and fold, fold. And I found that the easiest way for me at least to do it was to just kind of stuff it in like one piece at a time. So I always like to start with the handles so that way they're not hanging out at the top. So I take the, the handles and kind of fold, pull this area over here and just start stuffing it in with my thumbs. And if this takes a really long time, maybe uh, our video people can speed it up for us. So when you do it like this, there's gonna be a little bit of air caught in this bottom area that you haven't stuffed in yet. So you can kind of just push that out with your hand. If you fold it, you don't have that as much of an issue with that. But this is still pretty quick. I think I've been going, what, like 20 seconds now. And then it is all inside there. And you kind of just start T tightening it, I'll bring it a little closer, start tightening it, push that little last bit inside there, and then tighten it the rest of the way. So the reason I do the handles first is because I had a couple times where the handle like would be poking out a little bit, and then this was in my bag, and then the handle started coming out just a smidge because um, there's like more for something to like get hooked on it and pull it out. But overall, very happy with this thing. It's, it's really small, and to have, you know, this is 18 liters in the palm of my hand right now, while you're traveling, especially if you're an ultralight traveler or someone who just likes to be prepared, it's nice to have that uh, freedom to have the ability to pull this out and fill it with groceries, fill it with whatever you need to. So very handy to keep on you. So there you have it, the Sea to Summit Ultrasil Nano Shopping Bag. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next one.